praise God. Yes, praise the Lord. Well, that's it. I He's mean, awesome. come praise on. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's right. And I'm not. We're not going to start off with prayer because hopefully your spirit is in an attitude of communication with the Lord, and uh, you know, one way or the other. And let's hope you're on good terms and not gripping. Uh, but God is patient. He listens. And we're we're going to start at the very bottom of the page. We left off last Sunday where it gives us a uh, definition of iniquity. Now look. There are times when demonic spirits, you can go all your life and not ever really notice anything unusual in your personality or your... Uh, and guys, why do you think Jesus came? Because we were under the rule of that kingdom. Okay? And there's a reality to that that I would like to talk about, but I don't know enough... Uh, statistics and tec technical stuff to really go into it. But, uh, so we all have to have our, we all have to become a new, see, it just fascinates me, the scriptures. Every time science progresses, the knowledge of science, in science world, it only to me proves the words of scripture. It only proves the whole context of why Jesus came, what God said, what the prophets said, what the apostles wrote about. Uh, and so now it's not just this little ooey ooey little world we live in, you know. It's these become reality. And so when it says we become a new creature, he means that. Because if you really knew what's been going on, for a couple of thousand years or more, 6,000 years, you'd understand. We have to become a new creature in Christ. That's, that's just, it's just that miracle that happens. And then because we're in such habits, our mind, our mind has been shaped by what? The What's, world. Yeah, the world. our culture, our family, or whatever you want to say, and by the world systems. And our own reasonings. So what it says here is that there are a lot of times parts of our thinking and our mindset doesn't actually show up until what happens? Until we find ourselves under pressure of some kind. Alright? And then our circumstances change or come out, become out of our control. We find out a lot about ourselves, don't we? And I can remember being married. You know, I remember being married. <laughs> Probably a good thing, huh? Yeah. Anyway, uh, when I was young and first married and uh, had just had my oldest child, and so I was at home and I thought, I wonder what it's all about those uh, soap operas. So I thought, well, I'm at home. I'll see what they're like. So you start watching those soap operas discovered they're really nothing more than a oh, generational miniseries. But basically, I, I would watch their responses and their reactions and all these relationships that they bring up, right? And it's funny how people are having relationships they shouldn't. You know, if you wouldn't have a relationship with that guy, you wouldn't have that problem. But anyway, so finally one day it was like the Lord said, why are you watching this junk? Because you don't, I don't have to live that way. In other words, I don't have to have those same reactions to life. You know, those dramatic reactions. What? Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all that. God tempers those things for us when we allow Him to. You know. And we don't have to live like our life is a soap opera all right. the time. Because we do have a wisdom that the world doesn't have. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Spirit. It's like I will repeat myself. The world has it, just haven't accepted it. Well, that's true. <laughs> they all, it's here. They just haven't accepted it. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, 
you can still have all this and still miss it some days because there's no understanding with it if you don't have the Holy Spirit or relationship with Christ. Uh, so let's say that pressures of the moment okay, can bring out the desires and the intents of the heart. So there's a lot of times if you have a relationship with someone and it's a close relationship you will allow them to what to maybe skip by on some attitude problem they're having with you because why because you know their intent and you know they're really not you know we have a way of doing justifying this for people we love or we believe they love us so we let them get away with some things because we know what it's different than just what they said. It's because I really know how they feel inside. So sometimes I can overlook some of the things that come out of their mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if that ain't true, we are in trouble. All right, well, let's look at the word iniquity. as injustice, unrighteousness, a deviation from rectitude as the iniquity of war or the slave trade want of rectitude in principle as a malicious prosecution and a particular deviation from rectitude such as a sin or a crime or wickedness, any act of injustice, original want of holiness or depravity, like we were shaped in iniquity. These, and we're on the next last page here, these are the sufferings of someone whom the spirits believe they have rights to. <coughs> so far we've just talked about you know, as a Christian, a lot of times we are uh, harassed by certain things and we realize that. But there's things also that we have to realize that we sometimes inherit from generations without even, you know, thinking about it. And we're, common things would be diseases, right? Or illnesses or tendencies, physical tendencies. And old, older age, as we get older and things like that, that we justify our weaknesses. Uh, and the spirits, a lot of times, will stay with a person. And we, a lot of times, they'll call these familiar spirits because they, hey, you know, they've been with your family for years. Certain generational, what we call generational curses. Um... In the day and age in which we live, we realize that there are a lot of things that have affect all of us. There's just nobody has really escaped divorce in their family or, you know, a lot of things nowadays. And so the problem is if you find yourself, you know, a lot of people wake up one day and they go, oh my gosh, I'm just, this is just a pattern in my family, you know. And so those are things that ought to open our eyes and we ought to stop and say, Lord, is there something, other influence here besides what we like to attribute to just nature? <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or that there's something going on here that we don't have control over and it needs to stop here with me. We have the right and ability as a child of God to do that. We don't have to let our life become that soap opera. Now, does it mean those circumstances will never show up again? A lot of times it does. A lot of times you can nip that thing in the bud and it'll stop right there. It'll never come back. You can draw what a lot of preachers call a bloodline in your family and dare the devil to step over it again. And it won't happen in your family with your children. But then there's a lot of times the same circumstances may present themselves just like it does in a physical illness. What are you going to do if you know you've been delivered? You can claim that. Remember that. Yeah. You, well, you don't claim the circumstances the of the illness, but you, yes. And you do claim, like uh, Nate said, you claim the deliverance and the healing from that thing. And there's lots of different methods and responses to have to doing that. There was a, a person I know that was being harassed at night by a specific spirit. 
in their dreams. <clears throat> and so finally, they prayed for years. Oh God, you know, deliver me from this. They beat themselves up thinking maybe they did something impure to open the door. Maybe something else was going on. And they prayed and they prayed and they wept and they wept and lived under the condemnation and guilt. And then one day, the Spirit came and they uh, gave in to whatever it was. And uh, all of a sudden, they woke up the next morning and they, said, they decided to begin to praise the Lord. They hadn't seen deliverance yet. Okay? But they stood up and they said, You know what? I'm a child of God. And I've been delivered. Mm -hmm. And they spoke it out loud in their home. Do you know that thing never came back? Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Because the devil's intent isn't always to get you to sin. He's, his intent is to make you become sin. See, you, we don't understand something. We are begotten of love. See, God is, His whole being is what? Is love. It is, love. is the def definition of what that is. And so, we were, the intent there was that we were begotten of love in the Spirit. Well, uh, same way with Satan. And Jesus told the uh, Pharisees, you're nothing but liars, you're just like your father. The devil's father of lies. And that scripture in Ephesians, Brother Nate read that a couple of weeks ago. It might have been last week. I don't know. No, I did last week. <laughs> you preached last week. I sure did. Anyway, uh, in Ephesians where it says, you know, I used to read that because our <coughs> mind goes, well, we used to walk in darkness, you know, but now we are in light. So that's different. No, it doesn't say that. It says we are light. Yes, right. We become that. And so this, the devil doesn't want that for us on the light side. He wants us on the dark side. And that's where Darth, if Darth Vader ever shows up in the house. Then tell him to go away. Yep. <laughs> Shine the light. <laughs> right. Get your lightsaber out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the spirits believe because of certain elements that we have not dealt with in our life that either because of the generation curses or the individual sin, it may be the presence of one spirit or a cluster. In this case, the person must renounce the sin or believe that gave permission to enter. If you are dealing with someone... Uh, and you have, you know, whether it's by the Spirit or just general knowledge or because they told you, you recognize that there's some occult ties there. Okay, and I don't mean they had to walk around and have orgies in the woods. Well, it could be anything. It could be reading the horoscope in the newspaper. Like Ouija board. It could, oh, definitely a Ouija board. That's, that's not even an if. Yeah. <laughs> Because those are gateways. And the enemy holds on to those things. Yeah. He says, well, you entertained this, so hey, I've got a door here. Uh, the other times we were talking, we've been talking mostly about intruders and interlopers who don't belong, and squatters who will claim rights that they really don't have. But because you're negligent in a certain area, they're just going to stay there. You have to stand up to those things. And so, in this sense, they believe they have permission, and they're not going to want to leave. And see, we don't understand the legality sometimes that heaven has a government. And God is the judge. And so, there's one time, I, I had, I just by the Spirit, I was praying about a certain thing, and, and this, by the Spirit, I saw the courtroom of heaven, and we have the accuser, right? That's what Satan's called, the accuser of the brethren. He comes up and he goes, well, God, she did this, or this happened, or uh, I have a right here. And finally, because it was, I was praying about a different person and what was going on in their life, and it was connected to me, so it wasn't like I was overstepping my boundaries here. 
So the accuser comes. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times uh, there is a scripture, the Lord said, uh, <coughs> agree with your enemy on the way to court. So that you don't have to go to court. So that you don't have to when you get there. In other words, if there's a way to resolve the thing, resolve it. You know, put down your pride or whatever and resolve it on your way or even admit you were wrong. So if you get to court, you put yourself on the mercy of the court, right? And so, uh, anyway, I was praying and I saw the courtroom of heaven and, of course, the enemy saying this, that, and the other thing. And he was right about some of the circumstances. Yes, that's a fact. That did. That person did this. That's a fact. That person was involved here. But I, it was like the Holy Spirit stood me up. And I said, you know, to the judge of heaven, I said, you don't understand. The accuser doesn't have a right to say any of that because of the precedence that heaven sets. Because he does not come from love. See, the judge is going to judge from what bench? Right. From love, pure love. The accuser comes from what? Lies and deceit. And if that's where he comes from, then everything he says is a lie. Mm -hmm. And so I stood up and said that. You know, and it started to break some of the barriers in that person's life. Mm. And, and we take the scriptures. Guys, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to work with you when it comes to reading scripture. He's your teacher. He's going to give you understanding of how to put that and apply that in your life. And sometimes we are so rigid. Now, am I talking about twisting scriptures, taking them completely out of context? No. <clears throat> But I am talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to open up your understanding and your perspective. Because we get so lost in our own understanding of how what words mean that we don't know sometimes. So, evil spirits of sickness, disease, distraction, discouragement, and disagreement can come against us as outside sources of what? Violence, persecution, and persuasion. These are the types that are caused, I mean used by the control of man and governments. <coughs> Religious legalisms can also fall in this category. It's called control. Manipulation and control. And that's just characteristics of a spirit of witchcraft. And usually it's based in what? Fear, spirit of fear. <clears throat> Anytime, I like good laws. I don't know about you. I like good boundaries. I like laws that are put in place that bring about civilized justice. I like that kind of stuff. But I've also got to remember that if I'm going to let someone start setting laws for me, that I might come across one I don't like. Mm -hmm. That's the same way with praying for justice. A lot of times we pray according to our feelings of what we're feeling. If we're feeling that an injustice has been done, you know, somebody didn't treat me right, the first thing we do is, oh God, I need justice, I need justice. Mm -hmm. But justice is not always going to be in my favor. Because God's justice is pure, it's divine, and therefore His justice is going to be righteous across the board. And depending on where I fall in that category, <laughs> you know, is how it's going to land on me. When you're praying for people and you discover that there are occultic or just even playing around with some things that we we like to think of a lot of this stuff is well it's just in, it's an imaginations it's not real you know 
Like we watch cartoons all our life. We've been raised on television. So we watch all that stuff and we go, well, it's not real. Uh, and so we dismiss things that in reality could really be a hold or a gateway or a doorway into something deeper and more spiritual. Watch for those things. You need to ask that person about that. If you're praying for someone and this comes up, you need to have them renounce things. I saw one time a minister, uh, I was watching an evangelist on TV, and he was uh, praying over people, and he, a woman came up, and she was Indian from East India, and she wanted prayer for healing. And so the power of God hit her, and uh, she was slain in the spirit. She got up. She was being healed, and she was all excited. But uh, this man did something that I was very glad that he did, was instead of just reveling in that. Sometimes we revel in our miracle and not the miracle worker. See what I'm saying? He stopped her. And he explained to her, because I'll tell you why. Uh, in India, they have thousands of gods and goddesses. And so it's nothing for them to add a new one. In fact, we had some friends where we lived for 30-something years who were Indian, and they were not Christian. They didn't have a problem going to a church, a Christian church at all, because to them, they could just add another one. See, it wasn't anything unusual for them. And so he stopped her right then, and he explained to her that this was Jesus, and that she was going to have to lay down all those other gods and put her allegiance toward Christ. You know, we got to remember these things sometimes. Pay attention to what the Spirit says. Um, so how do we really address the spirits? First of all, I'm going to say this. You command an evil spirit. And the word command, and I think it's more or less, I can't remember, it's the Greek. It means to tell them, you order them to go from this place to another place. Now, I'm, I'm not always sure where that other place is. <laughs> you know? We have a lady in, at the other church that she said she used to ask her angels to take them to the gates of hell and chain them there. And one of her angels told her they don't like doing that. They, and she said, well, it's not their job. Well, what am I supposed to do instead? She said, send them to judgment. That's right. To have the angels take them to You send them to court, and the judge decides how to proceed. In fact, in one point, I'll give you another little neat thing. There was a person we knew, a friend, and she discovered that her great-grandbabies were being molested and abused by a boyfriend of their mother's. And she was devastated. I mean, what else could you feel? You know, you feel helpless. You just feel. And so she was, we were at prayer meeting, and she said, I really need prayer because my heart hurts and I'm so angry. You know. And the Holy Spirit just rose up. And the, this word, it's amazing. You think you're so smart, but you're not. Because the Holy Spirit, I think to myself, I'm not this smart. I don't know how this happens. But immediately it came up and he said, you need to extradite that. Yeah. Hmm. Webster? <laughs> yeah, it was. It says you need to extradite. And I said, what do you mean by that? Well, to extradite means you turn over that prisoner to the rightful authorities so that in the rightful place, jurisdiction, so they can judge that proceeding over that person. See, we carry so much stuff that it's not our place to carry. Yeah. So if, if all of a sudden, if you say in your heart, look, I'm extraditing these emotions, I'm extraditing this circumstance, this whole injustice, and I'm sending it over to God, the judge, he's going to have to deal with it. See, instead of me sitting and trying to deal with something I can't, mm -hmm. and deal with emotions that I can't, See, we put up with so much stuff that we shouldn't. And we find ourselves, what, 
locked up in our feelings and, and lost sometimes even. And then the next thing you know is our perspective is in, on imbalance. We're not, we're feeling, the, we're feeling hurt and misused and victimized. And you don't have authority if you're walking around with a victim spirit. <clears throat> there was a woman, I might have told y'all this, who was a counselor where, we, where I ministered and we had a counseling service. And uh, she was one of the counselors. And she came in one morning and you talk about somebody being devastated, she was. Her adult son was in the middle of a big divorce, a bad divorce, where he had two or three little children, you know, and his wife. Well, the wife took the children and went to her parents' home. And he had a restraining order against him. But he insisted one day on going and seeing his kids. And when he did, the, the father-in-law, because he became aggressive and violent, the father-in-law shot him. Mm -hmm. And it killed him. Mm -hmm. Here's this Christian woman, spirit-filled Christian woman, and she's a counselor, so she, she has some knowledge of how to put these things into perspective and tools. But she walks in and she looks at me and she says, you know, she goes, well, I know I have to forgive him now. But I'll say that I'm forgiving, but I know if, but I'm going to believe that God's going to judge him for this one day, this man, hmm. you know. And we meet, I didn't say a word to her, but all of a sudden the Spirit just said, the Bible says <laughs> that if we forgive anyone, what's going to happen? We're forgiven. God's going to forgive them too. He said, anyone you let go of their sin, he said, I'll let go of it too. And I couldn't agree with her that God was going to judge him in the long run for what he did. You know? We're all going to be judged. Huh? We'll all be judged at the end. Well, at the end, well, yes. Well, are we going to be judged under the blood of Christ or not? Or forgiven. Yeah. I mean, or are we going to be judged for everything guilty we've ever said or done or thought of? And so I had to tell her, you don't understand. Those aren't just empty words. If you're going to forgive somebody... You cannot hold that up to God and say, oh, well, you need to punish him for something. Well, you know, that's not her place. And so I just let her go because I knew mostly she was emotional because it had just happened that moment. I swear, people just walk in off the street. And like I told you all that time, they sent this woman comes in here, her father brings her because she just shot her husband. And I'm like, that was my first counseling session. It's not a good time to go to counseling. No, well, you know, I'm just thinking, you really don't need to talk to me. You need to wait till you get your lawyer and do all the talking to him. It does say that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, which yes, frees does. us from having to, or having from wanting to have the desire of getting vengeance, you know, because we can trust God for that. For whatever happens is is between Him and God for that judgment, not for, you know, not my not my place. It's not my place because there's a lot of times that in the moment I can't say I forgive, but neither can I take on that responsibility of judging that person. Okay, and like Nate says, we believe we give we extradite that. Right. Come on, right. you have to extradite it to the correct place, to the right authorities, because we can't carry that. I cannot off the top, I mean, I've seen Christian. I love everybody, and I thought, no, you don't. You cannot say you love everybody because you ain't lived with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been on a date, first date, and the guy goes, oh, honey, I love you, and I'm thinking, no, you don't. You don't even know me. How can you tell me you love me? See, we just flippantly use things. And I'm not saying there's, there's a time and a place that we stand up to what's coming against us and we say the right thing, you know, knowing that eventually we're going to really walk in it too. But what I'm talking about is when we just let our emotions and all these things get to us, I've seen so many people say things that I thought, that's not even true. 
How can you say that? Good or bad, it might sound good, but it's not true. Because a little bit down the road, they fall apart. Mm -hmm. And they're spewing out hatefulness and hurt. Right. See? Right. Because they couldn't extradite those emotions to the right place. They didn't know where to send them to. You know, we don't. And so this is what we're going to deal with when we're praying for people. You know, and we, we like to say those religious terms. Just give it to the Lord. <laughs> you know. And we say those terms, but what does that really mean? And, and maybe we need to explain that to them sometime. That I honestly cannot carry this. I have to give it to someone else who has already been experienced at it mm -hmm. and knows and has overcome the situation. So, we have several different ways that we address the spirits <laughs> by learning to use the keys of binding and loosening. Someone tell me how you would use that. If you were praying with someone and you sensed that there was a working of the enemy there, an influence of the enemy in one way or the other, whether it's just a mindset or whether it's a real uh, spirit you're dealing with, how would you use that? Use well, the word. verse. Huh? Use the word. Well, that's a given. The verse says whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I, and I typically, I, I used to always think that was backwards. Like, well... Do we have that authority? But actually that is the way it is meant and that God does give us that authority that whatever we bind on earth, it, so it shall be in the spiritual realms as well. So he, our prayers are honored in that way. Yes. That's what he said. And there will be times when we'll know that we need to actually bind up a demon or a... I'll use, yeah, de demonic in spirit. And loose the person, right? But here's another way to do this. We can bind the will of God to a person. See what I'm saying? And it, the scripture all through the Old Testament talks about putting the word of the Lord in different places on your body. So that they would have it bound to them. Mm. They would have it always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to say, look, Lord, I just bind that person, your word to that person's life. Okay? And I loose them from, you know, this, that, or the other thing. We've got to, this is why we need to know the Holy Spirit so he can give us wisdom on how and what to say. So we're used to saying, well, I bind the devil. Well, no, you're not binding the devil. He's still out there moving around. <laughs> you know, so be more specific when you pray. Let the Holy Spirit give you more uh, strategies. Yes, strategies of prayer. <laughs> Don't just go around saying things just because you've heard them for 30 years, but God is very gracious to us ignorant folks. <laughs> you know? I think names are so powerful that especially, usually when I'm doing counseling with someone, I need them to label their emotions or label yeah. what they're Actually, dealing feeling. with. They have to get to the root. It's not just, well, I'm sad right now. What made you sad? Right. We need to find that and deal with that. Right? It's not just the surface. And so once you've labeled it, then you bind it or you loose it or whatever you do to it or release it and for, add forgiveness and all that junk. And most of the time, the first thing you're going to get from a person is just that top level emotion of what they're feeling in the moment, okay? When it's a lot of times it's just because they don't have the vocabulary. They're not, they don't know. At one time I worked at for TYC over in Brownwood and we went through a course where we had to sit and we let the client tell us how they were feeling and then what we were to do was give them feedback on how that kind of fit or what the definition to that feeling was 
And then before long, you realize they really, you know, some people only know three or four words, three or four feelings. Mad, pain, mad, 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 hurt. Yeah, I'm hurting. You know, it's pain. Then, and a lot of times, people, some people, I said this one time to Romero. Well, you hurt my feelings. I didn't even touch you. <laughs> oh. Oh. So see what I'm saying? <laughs> people have different perspective on what all that is. So they don't always have the vocabulary to say, well, and frustration. If it's strong enough, it's really just good old-fashioned anger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just a little bit controlled in the moment. So we need to kind of help them, like Rebecca said, if you're counseling someone and you've got time to do that, definitely help them find the words. So the way they taught <laughs> us was if they said, well, I'm sad. Well, you would say, well, uh, maybe you mean you're uh, hurting and they would go well yeah maybe that's what I mean you know and so they give you another word and you kind of keep adding a different word there till we get to the root of their feelings and they understand okay let's say coming against them in an opposite spirit and I don't mean coming against, that was probably not really coming written. Coming against the Spirit. Coming against the Spirit, yes. And having an opposite Spirit. That's hard to do sometimes. Okay. A lot of times, if we're discerning people, uh, we can sense things going on. You might sense someone's in a bad mood. And if they say something to you where immediately you've taken offense, but it might not have been really what they meant at all. And was not probably even responding to you personally. But the devil will take that and you'll go home going, well, I don't know what I said. Well, I didn't mean that, you know. And he'll build it up till my goodness. So we have to put those thoughts and responses to other people in our place. There's been a lot of times God has said, when I preach, it's like the Lord, it's not that you're, the compassion of God is there. Even though the words may be strong words, they have to be. But the compassion of the Lord's got to be there too by the Spirit of God. And it's not always tolerating somebody all the time. You know, we, we've got a whole... Uh, Society full of people wanting tolerate, you know, tolerate this, tolerate that. Real love doesn't tolerate some things. Real love exposes things. And I'm not talking about you expose the person to destroy the person. You expose the sin or you expose the spirit that's present. And you get rid of what's not supposed to be there. So, uh, commanding them and casting them out is definitely one we need to do. And I think it's a good thing. We just command that spirit over to the judge of heaven for him to do. And a lot of times you could say, I command that spirit to leave here. And go to the dry places. Because we do know the scripture says they don't like dry places. So. And not come back. And it doesn't mean go to the Arabian desert and sit. Well, it might mean that. All right. And they can catch the next camel that comes along. <laughs> Resisting. James tells us that, to resist the devil. Right? <clears throat> Using the blood covenant. That's the biggest one we've got. The blood of Jesus is our legal right to things. Our, it's our authority to be able to say no to the devil. Using the power of Jesus' name. We know those stories. An atmosphere of his presence, exercising praise and worship, glorifying and exalting God. Sometimes that's all it takes, mm. is exposing that person to the right atmosphere of praise and worship, and just the 
presence of the Holy Spirit, and that's on the list too, the anointing, mm -hmm. breaks the yoke. Mm. Sometimes that's all it takes is for them to be exposed to that type of atmosphere and that person of the Holy Spirit. Also, speaking truth and the word. Because it says what? We shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Okay. That's not just a word. That is a living, breathing person. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Sometimes just introducing someone to Christ can bring complete deliverance in most areas of their life. Do not, in all of your wonderful Christian compassion, one of the warnings I will give you is it's not wise to lay hands on someone to cast the devil out of them. Okay? You may be holding a person's hand and praying with them. If you sense there's a wrong spirit there, and the Lord tells you, you need to take authority over that thing. You let their hands go. You take a step back. You leave your eyes open. You don't want to get clocked by the devil. Because he will do that sometimes. Or spit on you. Or bite you. Not that I've had that happen. I've had one little boy that needed deliverance. And he just stomped my foot and ground it into the the floor and I just kept praying I'm not going to give in to that he can stomp on my foot all he wants to and he just kept pressing as hard as he could it's a good thing he wasn't a big boy one of the high school boys and I knew he had a spirit because I tested the spirit because he already had problems he had problems at home family life was horrible and uh, he came to school and so I was to be an a personal aid for him part of the day. We are walking down the street, because we're walking around the school, it's a small school. And I started singing, because I thought, I'm, you know, a lot of times, guys, we know people, even times that we do, we just blow up in life, okay? But, and so a lot of times, kids are just reacting to the junk around them. We all do that. Mm -hmm. But this was, this was different. And so he was walking across, probably as far from me, at least as Rebecca is. And he wasn't paying one bit of attention to me. He was probably about nine years old. He was just a cussing and mad and everything. And I started singing, Jesus loves me, under my breath. Okay? He stopped and he turned around and he said, Stop! singing that. <laughs> I said, there you go. Now I know what I got here. Yeah. Mm. See? And then that's when we got back to the building and he started fighting me. Uh, that's when you have to come against him with an opposite spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't cuss him back and slap him, but I, you know, or drag him by the head of the hair down to the principal. <laughs> I had to take it for a while and, you know, so, I'm going to let you go, but I have something I want to hand out to you. And don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're up at the altar in a meeting and uh, someone comes uh, needs help, prayer, and it's that strong, get someone you know, all right, to come help you. Yeah. Just, just do that. Don't always have to stand alone, guys.